Johns Hopkins is wherever people go and take Johns Hopkins with them. Johns Hopkins is in East Baltimore. It's in the communities in rural Gaibanda. It's across various parts of Africa. It's in the minds of all the alumni who have graduated from Hopkins. I grew up in Lincoln, Massachusetts and came to Hopkins to go to nursing school. And it was a real education for me uh, to come here and to do uh, community health nursing. And every morning, I would go down to the Caroline Street Clinic, uh, which was the public health department, and get my black bag. And we carried a whole caseload of patients and did that for three months. And we had the same small census tract to work in. So we got to know all of the people who lived in that neighborhood. The relationship of Hopkins and this immediate neighborhood has been in existence for over a century and it's very, very strong, and it is very mutually beneficial. So many of our students come to Hopkins because they know that they will have this opportunity to be in the community, to work with real people with very real problems. Are you here with children? I have two children. Two children, are they boys or girls? I have two boys. We find as much domestic violence here in Baltimore as we do anywhere. Fortunately, here in Baltimore, we have a wonderful shelter, the House of Ruth of Maryland, that provides services to battered women and their children. The House of Ruth is a marvelous match for us because our students and faculty are very, very interested in the health of mothers and children. And it becomes a site for our faculty to practice. It is a site for our students to learn, and it's an opportunity for us to also give community service. <laughs> I'm a child and family therapist, so I'm interested in how anger gets out of control within the context of a family system. So this fellowship affords me the opportunity to have additional training and to work with families in, in research. How is she sleeping through the night for you? Good. Two months old, she slept through. I believe not only clinically but research-wise, I can make a difference. Not alone, but working with other people, I think, in an, a collaborative endeavor in the lives of women, children, and men. One of the things that we've been able to do at the School of Nursing is develop the danger assessment. And so this is a way that healthcare professionals can use something that really gives them an accurate picture of how much risk of homicide there is, and then getting women in touch with the services that they need. The exciting results of the work that the School of Nursing has done is that there truly is less intimate partner homicide in the city of Baltimore now than there was 10 or 15 years ago. We don't hesitate to take on the tough issues here. That's one of the things that is special about Hopkins. Um, tell us that something can't be done or tell us that it's too hard to do, uh, and we'll be right there. There are a lot of things you have to be aware of in this neighborhood. It's a dangerous place. There are a lot of people that belong to gangs and stuff, so you always have to be aware of your surroundings and who you're around and what groups you're in and stuff like that. I got algebra and history, and I got physical science right here, and I have chemistry right here. Books, I've always called them my best friends because you can learn so much from a book that it takes you to another realm of another universe, totally away from wherever you are. Poverty has been a constant challenge in my life since the day I was born. Poverty is a very dominant force in Gardena, dominant factor in everybody's life. And I think that adds to uh, the pressure that everybody feels. 
picked up a flyer on the CTY program and took the SATs and Danny got high scores. We were ecstatic, his father and I, that he was accepted. The Johns Hopkins University Center for Talented Youth started in 1979. We deal with the highly gifted students and um, we have summer programs in 23 university campuses. CTY provides a community, not only an intellectual community, but a social environment where being smart, according to what the kids tell us, is being cool. And they go back with an increased self-confidence that they're on the right track. Our role is to provide them with very pragmatic educational backgrounds and opportunities that will enable them to be able to compete with the best students in this country to come to the best universities in this country. The CTY staff push me to reach higher goals and aim higher in life. They push me to expand my horizons. I personally had never been on a college campus myself, ever. And it was just an awesome feeling to know that my son was accepted into the CTY program. It was just a dream come true. In my daily life, I see so many people who have dreams that are either broken or never got done. So I don't want to be so much a dreamer. I want to make things happen. There really is an educational crisis in this country. I think when people set low expectations on children because they're poor, because they live in a certain neighborhood, we really run the risk of losing so many children that in fact can rise to those expectations. If we don't reach out to every child who has this tremendous potential, then society is losing as much as this child and their family and their communities. Because these will truly be the children that will be this country's scientists and leaders and mathematicians and the ones that will lead us through into the next century. I have a deep love for this country, so from the moment I went to Hopkins, it was with the intention to come back to Bangladesh and work here as a public health professional. There's an unconscionable thing taking place out here. That is, mothers and children are dying needlessly. We have one named Dore here who died. One little dicky bird? No, two little dicky birds. <laughs> two little. You're looking at roughly 11,000 mothers dying from pregnancy-related causes and well over a quarter of a million infants who die in this country every year from likely poor nutrition. We're trying to look at whether or not improving the nutritional status of women and infants, particularly through vitamin A or beta-carotene, will prevent some of those deaths from occurring. If we find that this intervention even reduces 20% of those deaths, we'd be looking at saving about 50,000 infant lives per year in this country. To put a, a research study together that allows one to do that is an enormous undertaking. There's nothing like this in the rest of the world. Let them compete with each other and give us our best offer. John Hopkins is empowering Bangladeshi researchers to go forward to solve the problems at the grassroots level. Assalamu alaikum, Papa. How are you? I'm Simon Begum. I'm Mustafidur Rahman. We've got to get the science right. Because in countries like Bangladesh, where resources are scarce, if we make recommendations, we want to make recommendations that are sound, that are based on scientific evidence. And so our job here is to get it right. Once we get it right and have the confidence behind the data, it can move mountains. People talk about solving some of the big problems that face mankind. Before you can have programs, 
you have to have science. That's what we've established in Jivita. This is the first step in that chain, asking a question, finding the answers, developing a program, and then improving lives. At Hopkins, the thing that we learn to be is internationalists. We become scientists for the world.